So when I got into this career, it's something where I was like, oh, mm, no one really told me that this was going to be a thing. But like imagine taking your fifth grade art drawing and then putting it up on a big screen and pitching it to a bunch of executives. I almost succumbed to the pressure of just adding like an icon that was like this big and like flipping on its head because I was like, yes, highly encourage you to avoid at all costs. This next one, honestly, like makes me nervous. Like it's like hard for me to like talk. When I was looking at being a UX designer, there was so many things about how glamorous UX design was and no one was really out here talking about all the crappy experiences that they had and that wasn't really giving me the full picture. If I heard more of those types of experiences that were more visible into the bad and the ugly and the tough challenges, I think I would have been less blindsided in my first year of being a UX designer. I fully acknowledge that all jobs have their ups and downs and UX design is by no means perfect and I do not expect it to be. But I think by sharing some of these experiences, it might help you make a better decision if you're considering becoming a UX designer. Okay, this first one is really important because it's something I highly encourage you to avoid at all costs and that is being a solo UX designer. Now, that doesn't sound so bad if you haven't experienced it yourself, but if you ask any experienced UX designer, they will pity you. You know when you go to a brand new workout class and everyone's running around the room like ninjas and they're picking up weights and throwing them and everything's so effortless to them, but you're kind of standing there like, uh, what are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing here. And, and at the same time, you feel like this judginess of people just staring at you and you're just doing the wrong thing. Imagine that, but with your career, and it's happening on a loop every day when you go into the office. So all I knew coming out of boot camp was how to wireframe a fake company. Now this is a major downside of going through a boot camp is that they cannot simulate a real life project with you with real stakeholders, real clients. And so this is one of those things that really didn't help me prepare for the real world. I have a whole bunch of other videos about boot camps, tips, tricks, some honest reviews. So feel free to check them out. I'll pull them up here and in the descriptions below. When I first started and I was handed over my first project, I felt pretty confident because the first thing was wireframing, which is like I mentioned in boot camp, you do a lot. I didn't know if like once it came to designing and making the right decisions, I had no idea if I was on the right track. A real life project was designing a website for a spa. So I had to create the whole booking experience. And so I was thinking, what do I put in step two or step three? Should I show the actual Instagram feed on the page or should I just link them out to the Instagram? Clients would help here and there in giving that feedback, but ultimately they were looking to me to make those decisions. But I really didn't have another UX designer to collaborate with. I didn't have a UX designer to mentor me through the process. Every day I was just taking a stab in the dark. So if you're in the interview process or once you get there, please consider looking at a more UX mature company where there are a lot of UX designers that can help you grow and collaborate with. And, and that doesn't mean I don't regret working at this company. I'm actually so grateful they took a chance on me, but I think I could only tolerate it for an extent of time because if I had stayed any longer or let's say I have my entire career being the only UX designer, I genuinely think that it would stunt my career growth. Because a big chunk of being a UX designer is working with other designers, is getting critiques and feedbacks and seeing how other people approach design decisions because it is so subjective. This next one, honestly, like, makes me nervous. Like, it's like hard for me to like talk, but it's presentations. Like, imagine taking your fifth grade art drawing and then putting it up on a big screen and pitching it to a bunch of executives. I was the big baby in the room. <laughs> I was so fearful of it that I eventually did create some type of presentation template for myself because I just couldn't stand another meeting where I was just scrambling around. If you're interested in the template that I have, I actually have it in a YouTube video up here and spoiler alert, it's free, so go check it out. Now the topic of presentations also rolls into another very painful part of me learning what it's like being a UX designer and that is the rounds and rounds of revisions. I'm not a very patient person, so when I got into this career, it's something where I was like, oh, no one really told me that this was going to be a thing. My very first presentation I did with clients, I remember showing them the website and they immediately were like, uh, I don't really like that. I feel 
feel like other designers, they put in like some bouncy text and the images spin around, kind of like, oh, what's that really cool, really cool fashion website? What is it? Do you remember, Jim? Oh, I, I think, Tom, I think it's Zara.com. I love how, um... <laughs> I love how Zara has now notoriously become, like, the poster child of bad UX. Honestly, I feel like they do it on purpose, but I digress. I almost succumbed to the pressure of just adding, like, an icon that was, like, this big and, like, flipping on its head because I was like, yes, what, whatever you need because I don't know what I'm doing. And at least for me, negotiating and pitching was not my thing. Like, I was not a debate kid. I hated confrontation, still do. I very much learned the art of being rejected. You have to be really confident in your designs and feel that what you are providing is going to be the best experience for their customers or your customers. And eventually, the more times you do it, you just get used to it. So that's the upside. This last one, you might honestly be in this process right now, but the last painful moment in my first year of becoming a UX designer was moving on to the next one. After that first year, it was a lot of growing pains, but I still was like, you know what? I kind of like this. Yes, finding the first UX design job, but the second one for some reason felt that much harder. And at that point in my career, I knew I just needed to be surrounded by other UX designers. Honestly, selfishly, to validate that I was a good UX designer. And actually, no, not even for other UX designers to tell me that I was good, but just to validate that I even was one. At that point, I didn't even know if what I was doing was UX design because I was so fresh out of boot camp. Interviewing out there is no joke. I'll say my biggest tips here are that regardless of where you are in your first job as a UX designer, every month, write down all your biggest accomplishments. Write down clear, concrete examples of the designs that you've done, who they were for, how long it took. And then the second big one is just study the crap out of the company that you're interviewing with. Like literally understand them like the back of your hand. And this is probably how I was able to get through a lot of my interview rounds. And I actually have an interview study guide that I will put in my description below. Basically, I took 20 companies that I've interviewed with in my entire UX design career and compiled all of the questions that they've ever asked me and I slapped them into a document so you guys can get ahead of it. If you've made it this far, it sounds like you're interested in UX design and I love that for you. And if that's the case, feel free to watch these videos of why I enjoy what I do and how I became a UX designer without any experience. And if you're someone who can relate to any of the things that I mentioned in this video, please comment down below, vent it out, let me know that I'm not alone, and I will see you guys next time. It's one thing that I don't really love about my job.